What's up guys, this is Stopo Gaming, and today I'm going to show you how to make a gaming montage in DaVinci Resolve. If you want to follow along, I'll link the clips, music, and everything else in the description for you to download. Also, I'll put timestamps in the description if you just want to jump through certain parts. So, first things first, you're going to want to open Resolve and start a new project. We'll call it Montage Tutorial. Before importing your files, go to File, Project Settings, and make sure your settings match your clips. So, go over to Media and import your files. I have a folder in my Videos folder with everything, so I'll just go there and drag and drop the clips. Next, I'm going to import my B-roll, music, and the gun sound for the Car 98, which I'll explain later. I'm also going to import my logo for the intro and my outro as well. Okay, now we're going to head over to the Edit section and get started actually editing our clips. First, let's drag the first song onto the timeline. Next, I'm going to make a simple little intro. I'm using my logo, but you can use some text or just start with some B-roll. Now, I want that first piano note to be at 5 seconds, so I'm going to trim the audio and move it until it lines up. Next, I'm just going to stylize this intro a little bit. You could leave it static, but I think it would look better with some movement. I'm going to do a simple zoom in effect using keyframes, so go over to the inspector panel and click the little diamond next to the zoom sliders. It should turn red, which means you just created a keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and change the X and Y values to 25 to start. Then I'm going to go ahead 15 frames, or half a second, and change the values to 0.5. Then I'm going to scroll down to dynamic zoom and turn that on, and leave it on linear for a more dynamic scene as opposed to just leaving the logo stationary. So, let's see what we have so far. Cool, looks good. Next is B-roll. I want the first shot to start at the next piano note, so let's drag our first clip onto the timeline. I don't need the audio, so right click on the video and uncheck Link Clips. Then delete the audio clip by hitting Backspace. Then, line up the beginning with the piano note. Then, I want it to end on the next piano note, so line up the cursor. Hit B on your keyboard for the blade tool, and click on where the cursor is. Then hit A for the arrow tool, select the clip, and delete it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my other B-roll clips. Let's see how everything looks so far. Cool. If playback isn't smooth for you, left click anywhere on the timeline, then Control A to select everything, then right click a clip and select Render Cache Color Output. Next, drag your first clip onto the timeline and delete the audio. For this montage, I want to transition to a different song, so let's drag that onto the timeline as well. I want the first shot to sync up with that drop right there. Line up the cursor, left click the audio, and hit the M key to place a marker. Then go to the clip and place markers for each shot. The shot starts when the scope jerks. So right here is where the shot starts. Now, these markers help sync the music, but also help with syncing the gunshot sounds later on. I'm just going to go ahead and mess around with the audio a little bit so we get a smooth transition. So, what I did was, fade the first track out for 4 seconds, starting when the clip starts. Then, I faded the second song in, starting 1 second before the clip, and reaching full volume 1 second after the clip starts. 
Let's see how this sounds. You can experiment with this, but I like how this sounds, so let's move on. Now, it just so happens that this first clip syncs up almost perfectly with the music, so we can just move on to the second clip. I want the first shot from the next clip to sync up with this clap in the song, so let's set a marker for the audio and add our next clip to the timeline. Find the shot in the clip and add a marker there. How are we going to transition from the first clip to the second clip? Well, the first clip ends scoped in, and the second clip starts scoped in, so we're going to utilize those similar frames for a pretty seamless transition. But there's a gap between the clips. Well, we're going to fix that by adding some slow-mo to the first clip to fill in the blank space. I think it would look cool if we slow down the cocking animation, so let's do that. We'll start right here, so take your blade tool and cut there. and then we'll end it right here. So cut again, use A to switch back to your arrow tool, move this out of the way, then right click and go to change clip speed. We're gonna change that to 50% and make sure that ripple sequence is checked. And there you go, you have a pretty seamless transition. To make it even cleaner, Go over to the effects library, video transitions, and smooth cut. Drag and drop that between the two clips. Left click on the transition and change the duration to 0.25. You can make it whatever you want, but I think that looks good. Like I said earlier, if your playback isn't smooth, left click anywhere on the timeline, control A to select everything, right click on a clip and make sure you check render cache color output. Now what I'm going to do is play out the rest of the music and add markers for every beat. Make sure you have the audio selected, hit play, and hit M on your keyboard to add markers. There we go. All of our shots are going to sync up with one of those markers. Back to the clip. Let's mark the other shot. I want it to line up with this marker right here. So again, we need to slow something down. Now, we can guess at this, or we can look at how out of sync we are. Here's an example. In this example, the music is one second ahead of the video. So, we're going to take a one second clip of video and change the speed to 50% to sync it up. So, since each second is 30 frames, or 29.97 for me, but we'll round up to 30, we are 23 frames out of sync in this instance. So, we are going to take a 23 frame clip and slow it down 50%. Let's start one frame before the shot and cut. Then go back 23 frames and cut again. That's it for the second clip, time for the third clip. As you can see, the second clip has some running at the end, and the third clip has some running at the beginning, so we're going to use that as our transition. Now, we're basically doing the same thing we did with the last clip. We're going to add markers for each shot, and then line them up with the music. This shot is a little behind the beat I want to use, so again, we're going to add some slow-mo. This time, it's 11 frames out of sync, so we're going to take an 11 frame clip and slow it down 50%. The scoping animation is a good spot for this. The next shot is ahead of the beat, so instead of using slow-mo, we're going to speed up a clip to 200%. Here's an example. In this example, the music is one second behind the video, so we're going to take a two second clip of video and speed it up to 200%. Now, if you want to speed it up faster, say for example 500%, you would take a 5 second clip of video.
In this instance, the shot is 5 frames ahead of the beat, so we're going to take a 10 frame clip and speed it up to 200%. There you go, perfectly synced. For the next clip, same thing. Add it to the timeline, delete the audio, add your transition, mark your shots, and use slow-mo and super speed to sync up your shots with the music. Now, for this clip, everything's going to once again be the same, with one exception. We're going to use some jump cuts. Jump cuts are a good way to eliminate dead space, for example, running around. You want to sync up these cuts with the music the same way you've been doing with your shots. As you can see in this clip, there's a good bit of footage of me running around, so we got to do some jump cuts. I want this shot to line up with this beat, which is 36 frames out of sync. So we got to do two 18 frame cuts. Okay, I'm going to fast forward to the end of this clip, and then we'll move on to adding gun sounds, color correction, and those cinematic black bars. Alright, on to adding the gun sounds. Like I said earlier, this isn't necessary, but I like to add the gun sounds later on as opposed to using the actual clip's audio because it's cleaner and less cluttered. All you're going to do is align the gun audio with the markers you added to the video clips for your shots. You may need to use two audio tracks so the tracks don't interrupt each other. Next thing we're going to do is add those cinematic black bars known as a letterbox. If your footage is 1920 by 1080, set the top and bottom crop to 131 for a true 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. Do this to one clip, then making sure the clip is selected, hit Ctrl C. Select the rest of the clips and hit Alt V. And check crop and hit apply. This applies it to all of your clips. Last but not least, we have color correction. This section is totally based on your personal preference, but I like to keep it simple. I apply a simple S-curve and maybe adjust the saturation, contrast, and gamma slightly, and that's it. Once you adjust the settings for one clip, Select whatever other clips you want to apply the settings to. Then, middle click the first clip to apply the settings to the other clips. As far as render settings go, I just use the default YouTube 1080p render settings. I name my file, select my destination, add to render queue, and start render.
All right, guys, that'll do it. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at basic montage editing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. If you want to see my completed montage, click the link on the outro screen. And before you go, please drop a like and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. This is Stopo Gaming, and I'll see you in the next one.